In this demonstration, we're going to learn how to define and run a fluid dynamic simulation using the Explore stage in Discovery. We'll also be looking at the user interface, discussing the various parts and rules of the simulation, and adjusting some of the settings. To begin, we need to select a model for our simulation. Close the welcome screen, then click on Browse and locate the model. For this example, we're going to use a fairly simple design in the shape of an airfoil. This might look familiar if you've ever taken a close look at the wings of an airplane. By default, Discovery opens up in the Explore stage. This stage lets us analyze designs with real-time simulations. If you look at the top of the window, the Simulation tab menu is shown, which we will use to set up the simulation. In this menu, we have quick tools to set up a simulation, specify materials, define the physics involved, set the simulation options, and more. For this case, we will simulate the flow moving around this object. Select External Flow from the Quick Start menu. At this point, a rectangular orange outline should appear around the model geometry. This outline represents the fluid enclosure, which is like a box of air that will surround the model during the simulation. There are two more items we need to define on our enclosure before we can start seeing some results. The first is the inlet direction. This is the area of the box where the fluid is going to enter the enclosure. The leading edge or front of the airfoil is here on the right hand side of the model, so we'll select this green arrow as the inlet direction. The second item we need to define is the ground plane. We can think of this as the bottom of the fluid enclosure. Let's select the bottom face as our ground plane. As soon as we've defined both items, the model is automatically reoriented. To return to the orientation we started with, press H on the keyboard to return to the home view. If we look under the model, we can see the Simulation Information Display, or SID. The yellow border tells us that the simulation has not started yet. The symbol inside the hexagon shows the applied physics. In this case, we are simulating a fluid flow. More information can be found in the interactive help by pressing F1. Using the orientation tool at the bottom left of the screen, we can click the green dot on the face of the cube to look directly at the model from the side. We can see that the enclosure ends exactly at the bottom of the airfoil. As this is meant to be the wing of an airplane, we need to examine the airflow around the entire body. One way this can be fixed is by adjusting the position of the enclosure. We can use the Move tool to accomplish this. We can select the Design tab to access the tool, or we can click on the halo, select Modeling, and then the Move tool. Go to the Model tree and expand it. This is a list of all the items in the model. We're going to select the enclosure, then click and drag the blue arrow down until the airfoil is approximately in the center of the enclosure. Pressing the Escape key twice closes the Move tool. Press Control-0 to go to an isometric view. Before we make any more changes, let's take a moment to examine the physics tree. Here we can see listed the materials used for the body and for the fluid in the enclosure. For this simulation, we can ignore the material of the body, since it would not play a role in the results. However, it is important to change the fluid in the enclosure to air. Right-click on Water, Liquid, and select Edit. Go to the right side of the Heads Up Display, or HUD, and select Air. By default, the gravity is excluded from the simulation. The next items in the list are the boundary conditions, namely the rules of the simulation. These boundary conditions define how the fluid should behave at the sides of the enclosing box. The values we set in the boundary conditions will have a direct impact on the results of our simulation. It's important to not only understand what these are, but also why certain settings are chosen. Improperly defined boundary conditions will generate inaccurate results. As we move the cursor over the listed items, we can see on which surfaces the boundary conditions are applied. The velocity of the incoming flow is currently set to 0.05 meters per second, which is terribly slow for an airplane. Let's increase the velocity to something more respectable. 100 meters per second should be sufficient for now. We can click the value and enter in 100 meters per second. 
Below the flow velocity, we have the outlet pressure value. The outlet is the exit for the airflow. For this enclosure, it is the face opposite to the inlet face. We can keep the default value here. The ground plane and the extents are set respectively as no slip and free slip walls. The difference between these two settings is whether the fluid flow coming into contact with the wall will slow down or not. In this case, we can set the enclosure sides to free slip. Select the ground plane, right click, and select edit. Then select free slip in the HUD and press escape twice. By default, the surfaces of the body inside the enclosure are not listed and are set to no slip walls to simulate the real flow behavior. Having completed our adjustments, we can hide the enclosure by returning to the model tree and clicking on the eye icon next to enclosure. Let's go back to our side view using the orientation tool again. Now we can start our simulation by clicking the solve button in the bottom right corner of the window. The SID now shows a white light moving on a green border, indicating that the solution is progressing. Once the solution is completed, the SID border becomes solid green. Let's now explore some of the tools to visualize the results. Once a fluid simulation is started, Discovery displays the streamlines that show how the fluid is moving through the enclosure. The emitter position can be controlled by clicking the blue sphere and using the move tool. Clicking and dragging the outline will alter the shape and size. The streamlines menu in the results arc lets us adjust the width of the streamlines and increase or decrease their overall number. The color of the streamlines represents the local intensity of the velocity, as shown in the legend in the right side of the screen. The legend shows us how to interpret the visual results. High values are shown in red, while the low values are displayed in blue. At the top of the legend, we have several options to control the results display. The first option allows us to choose what quantity to report. When we change the variable, similar conditions apply. Red stands for a high value of the variable, while blue stands for a low value. Below that, we have a type of filter. This is currently set to magnitude and showing all velocity components of the flow. Remember that we're working with a model in three dimensions, which we label X, Y, and Z. The majority of the air in our enclosure is moving horizontally from right to left along the X direction. But as the air passes over the airfoil, some of it will move in the Y and Z directions as well. The filter allows us to examine the flow behavior in a single direction. The particle display has similar options with the filter allowing us to omit both high and low velocity particles by adjusting the sliders from either end. We can also use an emitter and control the emission rate and emitter radius using the sliders. Vectors show us the local direction of the field. They can be filtered to highlight specific areas of interest. Let's now turn on the contours. By default, we can visualize the highest values of the selected variable, in this case the velocity, through the entire volume. We can also visualize the lowest values in a similar fashion by changing the surface display priority. Another useful way to visualize the contours is to set the display option to outer and then activate the cut plane to see the results on a slice of the domain. You can click on the plane to edit its orientation. Double clicking the red curved arrow will rotate the plane in that direction by 90 degrees. Then we can use the blue handle to visualize the results at different locations. The last item we'll discuss is the fidelity setting, which we can find by hovering the mouse on the explore stage bar. Discovery tries to strike a balance between accuracy and speed. In many cases, the results can be both fast and accurate, but for complex simulations, a higher fidelity setting may be necessary. Higher fidelity allows Discover to resolve smaller geometrical features, but it also increases the time to complete the simulation. Increase the fidelity to the halfway point along the bar. The flow near the back of the airfoil is now smoother, and we begin to see more details in the wake. 
As the designer and engineer, it is up to you to interpret the results, determine if they look as expected, and adjust the fidelity if necessary. This concludes the demonstration on how to define a fluid simulation in Discovery.